So the general election has come and gone. And upon reflection, it couldn't really have gone much better, from certainly from my perspective. Uh, the only thing better than what happened at this general election would be a for Britain government. I'm not quite ready for that yet. We have been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this. This is what we've wanted. This is what for Britain has wanted. Stability and clarity. A stable, authoritative Tory government for five years. And I think that's what we're going to get. Boris Johnson swept the board. Uh, congratulations to him. I'm not his biggest fan, but congratulations to him. Uh, fantastic job and took really, really gave Labour the kicking. It's so richly, richly deserved. Uh, there are seats in the north of England that went Tory, which shocked me. I mean, even Tony Blair's old seat went Tory. Um, so Labour got a kicking and the, and the British people have really resoundingly said no to Labour and, and to Corbyn and to that extreme left, both economics uh, and, uh, you know, social progressivism. The, the British people have said no, you know, enough, enough. We don't want you people. I suspect there may well be a uh, well, civil war in Labour now. And I hope there is a civil war in Labour now. And I hope it ends them. And I hope that this is the end of the road for them because they deserve it to be the end of the road. They've completely turned their back on their own heartlands and they deserve to be uh, wiped out for that. Now, I, you know, if you can, you can see the names being floated around for... Uh, for um the next Labour leader and you can they thank God they learn nothing from it. Nothing at all. You've got names like Yvette Cooper Yvette Cooper? I mean this is the Blair Balls Brown year. She is just a symbol of that, isn't she? Uh Jess Phillips has thrown her hat in the ring. Well, but I think the first to declare her intention to stand for leader. It'll be interesting. I mean, I'm 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 very much very much not a Jess Phillips fan. Um, but, uh, at least she's not boring. Um, Corbyn is boring as well as being an extreme left uh, nutcase. He is actually quite dull and dreary, and so is John McDonnell, despite being a dangerous, nasty piece of work. They're quite dull, aren't they? Um, so anyway, I I you know we we will probably see a reemergence of the Tony Blair, Labour. Uh, wing and it'll probably go to war with the Corbynista wing which is still very much there and still very powerful and remember momentum came along um, with this express intention and, and the express purpose of keeping Corbynites, uh, Corbyn in power and, and uh, I suspect Corbynites in power. So we'll watch Labour implode now uh, and we have now got five years of stability Minus some great catastrophe, which I don't think there will be. Um, five years of stability under Boris Johnson now. We didn't stand in this general election and we were right not to. It was the right decision. But let me tell you, we will be standing in the next one. This way we wanted a clear run. We wanted five years to build to... And we've, we've said what our plan is on this. You know, our, our, To me, things start now. The first two years of the existence of this party have been trying to put it into place, trying to get the machinery in place. And my God, I can tell you it's a tough job. So the machinery is, we've got all our ducks in a row uh, in that regard now. So it's time now for us to start looking towards the next general election where we will be standing candidates, myself included. And uh, that's our, our, the next five years now is, is our time to build towards that. And one of the ways we're going to build towards that is winning more council seats. And I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that we're going to win a couple more council seats come May. Uh, and then the, the momentum uh, will be with us. But back to the, the uh, general election. Labour uh, in trouble. Good. They deserve it. UKIP pretty much uh, a and I don't take I'm not a person who enjoys other people's suffering actually that's different from saying people deserve it Labour deserve it but it's not something I don't uh, jump up and down with excitement when someone loses their seat for example um, it doesn't it, politics is a very very tough game but some big names fell um, and UKIP is a casualty of this UKIP I think were pretty much humiliated and, and wiped wiped out and, and I know people don't want to acknowledge it 
but it's got to be the end of UKIP. We are entering now a post-Brexit phase and Boris Johnson's victory, his resounding victory, is there are several messages in it. One is that we don't want the left, but the other is that people want Brexit done, over and done with. They're so, so tired of hearing the word Brexit. Uh, Boris stuck to a clear, simple message, get Brexit done, get Brexit done, get Brexit done. It worked. It was a bit like Donald Trump and his build the wall. It works. Clear, concise messaging works. Um, but people are tired of Brexit, absolutely tired of Brexit. And, you, and, and UKIP cannot survive in a post-Brexit world. And we are entering that post-Brexit world. Now, it doesn't have anything to offer what what does it have what 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 is the U USP of UKIP now it's 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 it, it simply hasn't got a purpose now and I don't take joy in that it's an objective observation the Brexit party I mean Nigel Farage he doesn't now f make the same mistakes over and over again he Nigel likes the game he likes being in politics he wants to be in politics he likes being on TV he likes all of that um, and he wants to stay in politics. And I think his idea was to get to keep standing on a Boris isn't doing Brexit right platform. But the country is sick of Brexit and it won't work. And they're sick. of You know, they're, they're not going to listen for another 10 years to Nigel Farage banging on about every detail of Brexit not being right. It's not going to work. So I think that has finally sunk in with him. You don't name your party after a single issue and then say you're not a single issue party he didn't you know uh channel four i think and I, everyone loathes channel four i know but they held a and it might not have been channel four but somebody held a everything but brexit debate and nigel farage didn't go and i thought there's your opportunity to present yourself as not a single issue party and you don't take it i mean this is not great political judgment so the brexit party is gone there is nothing left and Nigel Farage I hear he's going to go and work with Donald Trump in America and in, in next year's campaign I don't know what he's going to do but I don't see another party emerging out of Nigel Farage I think uh, he I don't think he'd muster up the same passion about another issue that he did about uh, the EU or even the same knowledge about another issue that he did about the EU but the Brexit party is at an end now it's Brexit is at an end now but Boris is going to get this deal through Parliament and the country can move on it's not the Brexit we all would have wanted but that to me as I've said from the start the European Union is the real problem here there's no getting away from it the only way to get away from it is to bring it down um, so the Brexit party that's that that's that for Brexit party we are back. We are back to uh, Tory establishment, better than Labour establishment. Uh, and now there's only one emerging, serious emerging party that is anti-establishment. And that is for Britain. And I'm hearing uh, talk of people setting up a new, a new party. Well, you know what? Good luck to them. Good luck. I, you know, quarterly returns to the Electoral Commission. I'll just leave it there. You need serious, stable, honest, reliable people to make a party get off the ground. Um, this is not a, a it's not a, a minor job. It's a huge job. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of commitment and it takes a lot of money. Uh, this is a, this is a really tough thing to do. And I'm really proud that we've gotten through that infant phase and, and we're only getting uh, bigger and better. So if people do want to start a party, uh, good luck to them. Uh, I'm not going to make for Britain into some anti-Semitic, um, woman-hating, gay-hating throwback party. Uh, so if that's what people are looking for, by all means, start your own party. Uh, you know, enjoy the hard work. Know that your message won't resonate with the majority of the British public. They want fair. They want reasonable. They don't like extreme politics on any side. Um, so good luck. If that's, if that's what you want, go for it. If, however, you want a real party and someone, a party that has actually achieved the enormous uh, 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 overcome these enormous, enormous obstacles of, of getting the first couple of years under our belt, we are the only now serious anti-establishment party because we made the right decisions. We made sure we weren't aligned with a single 
particular issue. We made sure that we were clear, consistent, precise and we stuck with our principles. We made sure we behaved correctly. We got all our, I dotted all our I's and crossed all our T's. Uh, we still make sure we behave lawfully and correctly and do things the right way. I managed, by grace of God, to get a very a fantastic team of people around me who I trust, who are hardworking and reliable uh, and who make sure that all the admin, all the bureaucracy is taken care of. Um, but we've also got the right political message. Uh, we, you know, we, we've got 50 branches active around the country and the message is right from us. It's just what the country needs. It's tough. Uh, it's fair. Uh, it's it's reasonable. It's not actually, despite the lying press, it's not actually an extreme position at all. We are pro-British. We are, uh, you know, precise and clear. And that's not going to change. And we're not going to start bending our principles. You know what you get with me. Uh, I am who I say I am. Uh, what you see is what you get. I don't have any hidden agendas. I am quite upfront, uh, and I'm not going to change. We are, um, we're just going to grow and grow and grow from here. And I, I want to make an appeal now to Brexit Party members and UKIP members to come across. This, the end, it is the end of the road for Brexit. And I think even Nigel Farage knows that he can't get any more capital out of Brexit. And I don't know what he's going to do, but I think that has finally sunk in. Single issue parties only work until someone else takes that single issue away from you. Um, it doesn't work. I don't care about a single issue. I care about several issues. And I think there are several serious, profoundly serious problems facing this country, which Boris Johnson, I don't mean to be, um, <clears throat> you know, to rain on the parade, but I don't believe that Boris Johnson is the answer to these things. The mass immigration will continue under Boris Johnson. He will be politically correct about a variety of different things. Uh, like I said, I'm not his biggest fan. I don't dislike him either. I'm not his biggest fan, although I did find out today that he is a dog lover. And, and in all honesty, immediately the person goes up in my estimation when I find out they're a dog lover. But we're entering a new era now, post-Brexit era. We have stability for five years under Boris Johnson. We have a Tory government, thank God, and not a Labour one. I happen to think, actually, that Labour would have banned for Britain had they got to power. Labour is imploding. I predict, I've said this for a long, long time, Labour's days are, are numbered. They really are. They're going to be, they have, they've learned absolutely nothing. They're going to go to war with themselves now. The two, I predict, pre, pre, there could well be a split coming in the Labour Party. Um, so they're going to need... Labour needs uh, uh, trouncing. Labour needs to be thrown out by someone. And you can see there are areas, Hartlepool, for example, where the combined vote between the Brexit party and the Tory party would have trounced Labour. And what that tells me is that there are more people on our side of politics in Hartlepool, and that's just one seat, than on Labour's side of politics. So people are ready. People are ready to get let, let go of Labour. Uh, we are ready to take Labour's place. We are putting the building blocks in place. We are building a solid foundation. This is not a flash in the pan. We are building a foundation for good. We are here to stay. I am committed to this. I'm going to give my life to this. I have a team around me who are as committed as I am. Like I say, we've already got 50 branches up and running. Uh, we have an active party. We're going to be standing in May. I want people to think about what seats you want to stand in. January 11th I've, uh, is a meeting that I've talked about before where we will launch our campaign for May and we will win seats. And our eye is on five years time. This is it now. This is the time we start building. But we need and want experienced people from the Brexit party and from UKIP to come across. We are just starting out. We are fresh and enthusiastic and we have lots of jobs that need filling. So if you're interested, do come over. It's hard to walk away. I know how hard it is to walk away. I was in the Labour Party for nearly 10 years. It becomes a huge part of your life. But you've got to... I, I accepted that I needed to walk away from Labour because my conscience simply wouldn't allow me <clears throat> to stay in it any longer. And there comes a time when you've got to accept that change, change is here. 
change is here. We're entering a new era now. It is the post-Brexit era and parties identified solely with Brexit will not survive in the post-Brexit era. For Britain is the only small party to have achieved major party status and we did that in our first year. And I know that some parties, uh, Democrats and veterans, Time, uh, another couple of small parties have formed over the last uh, couple of years. None of them have achieved major party status at the Electoral Commission except us. There's something special here. We have the right policies. We have the right people. We have the right attitude. We have the right plan. We're not going to do this overnight. We have to do it with solid foundations in place and take our time. That's what we're doing. So come over, get on board. This is now the only anti-establishment option. Um, as I say, some people do want to start another party. Like I say, if they want an anti-Semitic, uh, anti-gay, anti-woman, let them have it. Nobody will want it. This is the party that's going to take away Labour's, uh, whatever grip it still has, whatever it has left. This is the one that's going to take it away. We're, we're working class people. Um, I come from a working class background. I know what it's like to have nothing. I know what it's like to struggle uh, and I will relate to and communicate with the people who have been abandoned by this progressive um, open border, despicable, hard left, loony left, progressive Labour Party. It's done. It's over. It's just a matter now of uh, tidying away the rest of the mess. And that's for Britain. That's our job. We are going to do it. We are going to do it. I'm going nowhere. This is our fate, our destiny. The stars are aligning for us. Everything is working out for us very, very well indeed. It's going incredibly well and I'm really, really proud and I'm really excited about this upcoming five-year period. And I'm excited about standing in the parliamentary uh, general election coming up next. Um, we've got a lot of time to prepare. Look, I've, you know, it, I'm not, I'm not going to repeat myself over and over again, uh, but get on board. It's over. Brexit, it's over. It's time to move on now and it's time to go after Labour, finish it, to put Labour out of its misery. Uh, it's time. And uh, I wish Boris Johnson luck. I don't think he is going to be the answer to many of this country's problems. Like I said, I don't want to rain on the parade. I don't want to be the miserable one. Uh, but he's not. But however, congratulations to him. Great victory over those nutcases on the other side of the house. Um, big scalps fell. Chucker Amona fell. Luciana Berger. What a mistake they made. And there's another point, by the way. Anna Subi is gone as well. Uh, there's another point. And I don't make this point often enough. Experienced MPs like Anna Subri, Chucker Amona, Luciana Berger broke away and formed their own party, Change UK. They couldn't even get a Twitter account to, you know, they couldn't even get it going on with their Twitter account. The design was appalling. Uh, they could, you know, they had the, they had the media behind them and they couldn't manage to get themselves off the ground at all. So, they couldn't. Luciana Berger, Chuka Amona, Anna Subri, etc. couldn't do what For Britain have done. Join us with the only answer now.